go. All right. Welcome everybody to November 11th, 2020. Um, the usual agenda review and agree on agenda topics. Of course, we can add things. Uh, it looks like everyone who's here has been here before. Uh, so let's jump right in. Uh, Felix, do you want to speak to the tables to div status? Oh, yeah, me and Tim. Um, it has been merged, merged two weeks ago. It's in. And I suspected there are fireworks <laughs> and yeah, explosions everywhere. Lots of stuff. Uh, first of all, this uh, in the Epic, as most of you are aware, there is the list of affected plugins. There are lots of the reported issues that we knew beforehand. Basically, there is an entry for each plugin affected. And I think it's very interesting if you can if you can open the second link, which it's a dashboard that team created. I think that you tell tell us a bit about that dashboard. No. I'm having trouble with maybe it, you, sorry. Maybe you cannot. <laughs> maybe need to log in or... Yeah, let me... It might be logged in users, maybe, I'm guessing. Um, let me quickly fix that. Anyway, here in the progressions that we are tracking are, uh, that are appearing, we are putting them under uh, under th that epic, uh, and sorry, under that word, dashboard. And then we sometimes we can, we may link them to actual known issues. For example, we have a if we have an issue that's related to a, to another ticket that we have on the main epic, we just link it. Okay, great. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you all for driving that forward. Yeah, do, do we want to triage any of these, Tim? Or are those just... Do we want to what, sorry? To triage the, any of the issues, something that we, do, we, we can think this is not the one we should pay special attention to. I think the major ones are all fixed, except for Artifactory plugin. Um, does... Can, can... Can you just give like a feeling, I mean, for, I mean, if your plugin is broken by this, I mean, I, I know it's different plugin by plugin, but I mean, it's a kind of a sense of you're looking at, you know, 10, 20 minutes work, or you're looking at a day or two's work, or, I mean, I mean, I know that's a how long is a piece of string question, but still, I mean, what, what's the range variability? Most of it's no more than 20 or 30 minutes. Um, right. So there was only three major plugins that were broken, um, branch API, CloudBees folder, and HTTP, well, HTTP request and Artifactory. So four major, pl four, four plugins that were used by quite a lot. Artif Artifactory plugin was the only one we were aware of before we shipped it. Um, and the rest of them are all a thousand users or less pretty much. Yeah, um, okay. So the conditional build step and and how broken are they? I mean, do they look ugly or is it impossible to configure your plugin? It's not just that, that plugin, it breaks the whole page. Ah, okay. So there are a few of those cases, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, in, some, ah. some, in quite a few cases, the users have said that oh, I'm not actually using that plugin and they've uninstalled it. Right. Um, in many of the cases, to be honest. Sorry, breaks the whole page. Again, does that mean that it's ugly and hard to use, or does it mean that it's impossible without, you know, blindly tabbing through stuff? And uh... so it's, it's flat out impossible. Um, yeah, okay. It, it will have to modify XML files. Yeah, okay. So, yeah. so the plugins need to be fixed if, um, and if quite a few plugins have been fixed. Yeah. The only one, okay. the only one with pending once I think there's two with pending reviews, post build task, which appears to have been up, up for adoption in like 2012 and then adopted in 2017 and then nothing done. And the current maintainer is not replying. So it's about, on, I think next next Monday, the adoption timeout expires. Mm. So, um, and then Raihan's sent a PR for conditional build step. Um, yeah, I haven't, I haven't really been looking at the ones that have a thousand or less users. I've just been triaging them. 
So there's only one thousand years of bus plugin that hasn't been fixed yet. I think so. Yeah. Um, there's one. There's at least, and the the difficulty is more in triaging the issues. If if a new plugin comes up, you basically got to disable plugins until you find the right one. Right. Um, and getting users to report it in a way that you can read the list. Um, Try to have them report it in a standard way, but they're quite often not reading it. And then you have to ask them again. And then you have to look through the list and see if there's one. Well, everything's already linked on the Epic. I updated the description of the the main issue that people are reporting issues to this morning. I put a big header at the top of it saying, look through these issues first and always include your full plugin list. Um, so hopefully that will help. Yeah. Um, and then it's just if they haven't checked the list, checking if um, one of those plugins is one of the known ones, because the last three ones have all been Artifactory and um, was two using the conditional build step plugin, I think. No, sorry, not that one, the post build task. Um, so I haven't found any new plugins in the last few days that have issues. Right. And yesterday was when the branch API in CloudBase folder was released with the fixes. So, all right. It's so, so the, the re, uh, sorry, Jeremy. Uh, the release of cloud these folders happened in the end. Sorry, what was that? Did you did you manage to get a reviews on cloud these folders? Uh, yeah, so branch API, we updated the baseline because there was some weird edge case in the jelly not resolving variables properly. Um, both myself and Devin weren't able to figure it out. Um, so we just updated the baseline. Um, uh -huh. Cloud folder, we used the standard. Um, keep compatibility with both old and new. Mm -hmm. And that works fine. Okay. Yeah, and regarding, well, regarding Cloudbees, uh, with Cloudbees are, we are going to start fixing and working on all our supported plugins soon, uh, the following weeks. We will probably start next week. Uh, there are quite a few of them, so, but we are paying attention to everything. We are also monitoring the, any possible stuff in Jenkins core that I also think, for example, by myself can code maybe a lot of there. Uh, and yeah, and we, of course, even if some plugins are not supported, we will help triage, mm -hmm. and, you know, diagnose and point users to the documentation and stuff, which um, point maintainers towards pull request recipes and documentation. So the whole, the whole thing, yeah. So that's what we are going to do. Yeah, I, th I think as uh, there's also a fix when it's going to be core weekly as well um, in, two, in the latest one that came out yesterday. So I think this should be a lot better after the releases went out yesterday with both core and branch API and Cloudbees folder. Most of the issues are now fixed. That would be great, yeah. Okay. Any more questions regarding the to this? Okay, uh, then I would like to give a brief uh, update, update in the jQuery work update. You know, well, as I mentioned one month ago on the, the last uh, on the last exit meeting, uh, we probably are working on updating jQuery versions, all jQuery versions to 3.5 on many on the most notable plugins. And the reason for that, the huge security vulnerabilities, uh, basically in replacing jQuery detached in as many places as I can. So this would be the most, this was the most difficult one, a pipeline stage view. I just wasn't able to update it to, from JS Builder to Webpack. I, and I needed to comment out one unit test. I will try to uh, to make it work with that unit test, but it's one unit, unit test after, uh, out of 39, that doesn't work. And the reason that it's difficult to test is I updated jQuery, JS DOM versions, and it's, it's the blackest of boxes. It's just impossible to peer inside and to, to, to see what's going on in that test. So I would try to manually replicate it to see that if that, that test is just covers a normal user flow, that test is just something that users will normally uh, see if they interact normally with the plugin. And yeah, then I will, will request reviews. So that's, yeah, so that's sort of the last of jQuery. Upgrade. It has been updated in Jenkins Core. As uh, we'll be releasing 266. So yeah, that's it. Just, just a quick update. 
What was the reason you couldn't migrate this to Webpack? Was it just too complicated? Just too complicated. Uh, it was a rabbit hole of, it was even worse than migrating Jenkins and more files, changing a lot of imports, then changing handlebar helper, importing handlebar templates didn't work because of the helpers. And also there's an extension point that depends on JS modules. It, 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 I, I just wasn't able. I, I, I worked on to meet for like 10 hours or more and I couldn't manage. I, I, I wasn't even happy with them. Sounds soul destroying. Yeah. Yeah, I think maybe your time to shine. Plugin manager performance improvements. Yep. And just opening it up. Yeah, so basically I've only got sick of sitting there waiting for plugin manager to load while I've been installing plugins. So it takes between like three and five seconds for me locally, just sitting there waiting, which isn't very nice. Um, so I've reworked it to do the, to, so the major problem really is that um, it loads all of the plugins into the browser, um, all like 15, 1600, um, and it's all on the page just hidden and then it searches them client side. Um, whereas what I've changed it to do basically is load, is not to, is to only load like 20 plugins or so, the top 20. Um, lazy then, loading, basically. Oh, it's not lazy loading as such, it loads like 20 and then um, you just have to search in the box I think a follow-on improvement would be pr pretty, well, you, you could add an infinite scroll sort of thing, whereas yeah. you scroll, you could add more and you just go from like popular ones down, but you could do that as a follow-on. I can quickly just show it, just to show it working and um, so other people can see it. Sure, that'd be great. Um, so this is the alt, so this is on, whatever it is. This is 2.265, so this is just the regular one. Um, just show you how long it currently takes. Um, so for me here, I'm just going to start loading the available plugin page. Black fans looking good. So this just finished now and that took so that took 16.8 seconds for a complete page load um so a bit more than the three to five seconds i was talking about um but let me just go back to here and so this is this is my custom built version um and if i go to available i've just got a complete um load time of 556 milliseconds which mm -hmm. is like a 40 uh 35 times improvement based on that previous one that you just saw. Um, so then here, so you see here that there's some plugins are loaded. So I think these are some of the most popular plugins. A lot of them, a lot of them are very old ones that just have been installed by default and a lot of things. I'm not sure about MapDB API. Maybe it's not quite doing it based on popularity, right? But if I go here and I search Slack, all the Slack plugins are there. If I want to go like pipeline, you see, see the pipelines and I want to get a user interface plugin. All those user interface plugins have just loaded. Um, mm -hmm. Another improvement that I did was I kept selected plugins. Um, so what happened in the previous version is that if you say I want Slack, um, you tick that and then you go, I want pipeline and you've lot, you don't know what's still selected it's actually still selected. And when you click install, it will get installed, but you've got no context of what you've got. And there's no way to tell what you have currently selected. Whereas here I've changed it. When you update your search, it will always keep the selected ones. So if I go here and then search um, pipeline, you'll see that these have always stayed. Mm. Um, oh, oh, look, that's amazing. Yeah, that's a big shift. Seriously, nicely done. Yeah, and you also see that the striping is still working. Um, yeah, the striping, I, I actually commented that one. Yeah. Uh, there there was a... Completely broken on the, old, on the old one. 
Yeah, this one, Daniel, uh, uh, reported in 246 or something like that in the beginning of summer. So it's nice to see this one sort of fixed. Now, now, now it's a shame that it's not in the other one, right? But <laughs> yeah. Is, is it still possible to search for meta labels? So labels like deprecated or adopt this plugin? Uh, I think I'm filtering those out. I think that's a bug. But what? Yeah, I don't know why you'd want to search for deprecated plugins. Um, but well, it's showing jQuery. Why jQuery are you showing the deprecated notice? But well, that's only showing because it's in. Um, it's probably in the just. Eh. I don't know why it's showing up. Oh, that, that looks actually good. Could could you search for adopt? Actually, no, it is working. Yeah, it is working. Right. Could you search for adopt? Okay, so that one doesn't look like it would work. Interesting, because they should actually behave alike. Cool. But yeah, uh, this is a huge improvement. Uh, so thank you for taking care of this. Yeah, thank you, Tim. And uh, did you? Do you think I'm taking the chance and to move it to, to the JSB tool chain? Sorry, to the Webpack tool chain. Yeah, I thought about it. Um... Because my reasoning is that you can, if you keep it in in Webpack, then you can split common for JavaScript iterative functions for the also the the the, the, in, the in, sorry install the. the Sorry, for the JavaScript, that's on, on the other two pages. So mm -hmm. there's some stuff that you could reuse. I don't know, maybe filtering, for example, and the retention of the of the selections. Yeah, maybe, yeah. Um, what can I say? I mean, uh, that's something that can come after, of course. It's yeah, that's one thing. So I haven't, I haven't touched the about the updates page or install pages, I avoid touching them. Um, they're still using the same functionality. Um, okay. Yeah, and basically just validating it. Um, I'm not sure if it's yeah. the most Jenkins way of doing it. It's very much basically constructed HTML in the JavaScript. Um, I mean, the only alternative would be to use handle or some, uh, it's just not good to set up right now to use it outside of Webpack. So, yeah. I mean, it works. Without, without bringing a framework in, I couldn't see a way. I, th I think this is above anything that Jenkins has built in that I could see. Yeah. It was already- This is how I used to do it back when I did JavaScript in about 2004, three. Yeah. So yeah, cool. it still works. <laughs> um, <laughs> it was a big enough of a pain getting like the data to, to travel properly having mm -hmm. to send it back as a string and build a JSON object manually. Yeah. And... Um, yeah, I noticed that when I expected it, the JSON was a bit, the, it didn't preview correctly. So is there any reason for that? Is it a proper JSON? Or... Uh, it's string escapes. It gets translated to a string um, because of how these JavaScript methods and um, it doesn't, it, it doesn't handle, so it's always to handle like string list. Um, it doesn't, so I, could, I couldn't return a whole object. Um, and it just, it just silently ignored me. Um, and then I had problems. I, tr I tried returning a list and that didn't work. Um, I was getting parsing errors. It wasn't parsing properly. Um, okay. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, possibly yeah. Ex expose it as a proper. If I did like a do a do method, and then did a request dot, um, and and then like set the headers and everything properly through the state for the request, I should be able to fix do that properly. Um, but then we'd have to change it to instead of so currently it's using um, Jenkins's that the bind functionality where you you go like. Um, var view equals bind and then the current um, descriptor or object back for the backing object. Um, and then you go, 
there's a few available plugins. Um, otherwise, I could just change it to be a proper API and then change it to make a REST API call instead. Mm -hmm, the see. other option. I was just being curious. Yeah. I also I also added in some functionality so it didn't smash the server. Um, I found that when I was typing initially, it was it was sending like twenty API calls and it just now it just sends depends on your typing speed. But if you type really fast, it will only send one. Um, so if I type, yeah, kind of that, it only it only did one response. Yeah. Oh, no, one also you could, if you have troubles uh, with that, you can also abort on flight. If you use, well, you would need to use an X, X HR request, you could abort on in, in flight requests so that it doesn't mess up. But yeah, uh, Devons is, is, is at least, Devons in search boxes is, is the right thing to do all the time. So yeah. Yeah. It's, it's uh, quite well. Quick question is do you limit the number of results? Yeah, I limit it to 20, I think. Okay, so it is absolutely impossible to ever see the R plugin in this list. Probably. Uh, yes. Unless you find a clever way. I don't to think find you it. could find the R plugin anyway. Statistics. You can't, you can't find the R plugin in this one because it, it makes it requires you to put two characters in. And what's the reason for the for the limitation? In in the old version or the new one? New ah was the old version limited? Uh, so the so the old one made made you type two characters before it just search. Um, there's no real well uh, the reason the reason to have a limitation is that um, by default um, basically I send I send no search filter. Um, and then I limit it to 20 results so I don't get 1,500 results coming back. Okay. So, yeah. I think. I mean, I, I'm guessing that people are going to have a problem with this implement. Some people will have a problem that, you know, I can't browse through plugins properly anymore. That's, I mean, it, it seems like a big improvement, but you're going to want to have some kind of either lazy loading or pagination just to. Yeah, well, I yeah, think lazy loading with thing. pagination built into it would be probably the best way of doing it. I don't think you'd want to implement pagination because no one's really going to look past the first or second page. Um, nah. So one, one problem that might actually be real and new when it's only 20 plugins, uh, what happens when you type blue ocean? <laughs> Because the problem is um, the blue, the actual Blue Ocean plugin is the least popular Blue Ocean titled plugin. Because every other Blue Ocean related plugin is a dependency of it. So you may be able to install Blue Ocean Jira without having Blue Ocean installed. So if we sort, since we sort by popularity, it's the least popular yeah, one. So we're actually right. not able to install Blue Ocean right now, uh, given how this works. Even if you, um, even if you uh, remove this, perhaps if you remove the space, Blue Ocean combined, um, it might show, but it may not. Nope. Doesn't. And the same will happen for the pipeline, right? For the pipeline suit. Well. Uh, there, at least, you can specify a workflow aggregator, which is its internal name, but you need to know it. Uh, or uh, it may be popular enough. The problem with Blotion is that it's just one big ball of plugins. Um, and so the workaround would be to install them one by one until Blotion finally shows up in the list, because all of the others are moved to installed. So that's still a bit of a weakness. Now, obviously, the ordering by popularity could be improved a bit in such a situation, but it's simply not expected to have a dozen or two dozen plugins when one would suffice. Yeah. So we could always put an artificial hack in there, which is Blue Ocean has max popularity. Oh. Or what if we just ask for 50 instead of 20? Yeah. yeah. I mean, 
we, yeah, we, I, we just I, ask for more, we get them, and it'll be in there then. Well, maybe we've stuck in 30. We'll, I could stick 30 in and say, see what happens. Phi. I mean, maybe that's something that can be done on that bit center side. I think 50 is a good compromise, at least for now. But I mean, I feel that my gut is that, I mean, people are going to not like this. Um, there's going to be a, a very a significant minority of people that's going to have issues with this solution or find cases. But... Yeah. I, I would rather than maybe start searching after two or three barrels of a thing. Yeah. Or just make it a stepping stone and it's right over it. Because um, I don't think it would be too hard to make a infinite scroll implementation of it, which just means that if you scroll down, you get the second page. Makes sense. But I didn't really want to do it in the first pull request. Yeah. No, well, uh, that's a great idea, actually. And we can always just set the, the number to be 50 for now anyway, and then change it if that scrolling comes in as well. Definitely a good hack that you could do in one minute to make it better, yeah. Yeah, good I'll, idea I'll do 50 later on and see if it doesn't cause any other issues. Um, otherwise, I'll do something like I do enough to make Blue Ocean show up. But yeah, thanks, Daniel. And let me add that as a comment. Oh, is there anything, any other feedback or anything people would like to see me try out? Can I see where, uh, unresolved security vulnerabilities? Give me a plugin. I did try. I did try this out, so it works. But give me a uh, plugin. Don't. The, the trick is you need to search for uh, IO slash security. At least that works in the current version. Uh, that doesn't work. Here's one mask passwords. Yeah. Interesting. Is that right? Is it is it no longer okay? Uh, what happens when you search for warning? Mask pass. I must already have. Can't watch it. Typo in there. There you go. It's pretty similar. Uh, you want to search for warning? Oh yeah, that. Uh, no, we don't search that. That's so that's um, so that's a UI display translation. Okay. So, we're not, so it's yeah. So before that would have worked because you were searching the whole HTML row on the client side. Right. Whereas now, that's... since all of the advisory URLs are in Jenkins IO slash security slash advisory, you could search for a substring of that to find all plugins with security issues. So that was a fun hack to see exactly how many unresolved security issues we had. If you want to hack for it, then I'm sure if you put something in. I'm, I'm, I'm fairly sure I was the only user of that. <laughs> it's a really crafty solution. Yeah. <laughs> um, so what You're we did my then... use case. I need a feature flag to enable it. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any with... oh, they don't... There's nothing with multiple that they are showing up. Warning. Is there no? Is there nothing? Oh, here we go. Here's one. FTP publisher. There you go. There you go. So your security warnings work, but you can't search for all of them at the moment. Uh, okay, but there is a problem, I think, uh, with this filter code. Mm -hmm. What's Actually, wrong? the security warnings. I mean, ignore it. Here's the problem. It. I am. I. It, if you open FTP Publisher, if you click the link, mm -hmm. it will 
probably have a dependency on it didn't have a dependency interesting i would have expected that to have a dependency on jquery because otherwise why would jquery show up in the list could you go back to jenkins because jQuery is marked for installation. Because oh, okay, right. That's uh, yeah. That that's a great improvement. I just missed it. Okay, that explains it. Okay, great. Thank you. So one of the, another improvement that I did. Um, I'll just quickly show it. Doesn't it doesn't seem to be foolproof, but it seems to work quite a lot better than before. Um, where is it? Yeah. Yeah. So there's this layout update callback.call, which is what's responsible for um, moving the buttons. Yeah. It's what's responsible for, for moving those buttons down. So before, sometimes, well, without that hack, it was always here on the initial page load. And sometimes in the old solution, it ended up in weird places if the page loaded quickly. So I've changed it to delay a little bit so that they the rows get added in and it seems I to, want to move, I, I want to move those to CSS uh, are everywhere. It may change the, the way that the buttons are sticking forms and in these pages, but I, I really want to move the these to CSS based. Yeah, it would be because good. it's also it, it's also for performance, it's just not great. Yeah, and it, there are lot of, yeah, and there are lots of ATH tests that are flaky because you load a form, for example. This, I'm digressing, but yeah, just two seconds. And there are forms that you load a form, for example, the ATH expects to click something, and because the buttons haven't moved yet with JavaScript, the ATH fails. So uh, it's a timing issue. So that I, I, I created that, uh, James North created a ticket to, I think it was James North to convert this to, uh, to, to CSS, it's on my radar. And hopefully I will be able to tackle it somewhere, yeah. <laughs> sometime. It took me a, a little bit of time to figure out what was going on and then a bit of time to figure out that hack to, because before it was really annoying. Yeah, it happened to me as well uh, when updating, I don't know which plan to jQuery. It was weird. Cool. Anything else, Daniel, you got anything more? Uh, what happens when you search for IO? Nothing interesting, I don't think. Okay, interesting. Branch hits the Docker Commons. Why did that come up? Um, so in the current version, okay. the problem is, um, yeah. so this is partly a feature and partly un unintentional in the current version you're able to search for any substring of plugins.jenkins.io um, to find all plugins, which uh, I provided people who complained that it no longer shows the entire list, that there's a workaround. Now, I don't know how many people actually need this, but uh, maybe there should be a button or something that says show all plugins. I I would expect we can probably get away with having this change in and then reacting to people complaining before we add it. But uh, just good to know that there's no longer such a workaround. Yeah, it would be easy to implement other than the UI side of it. It's, it's how, how do you, like, how do you put that there on the UI without making it look weird? The implementation is just, put a crazy high limit and, and then it would just work. Or you even add, add like a field where the user can limit how, choose how many plugins they want to limit it by. And you go like 20, 100 all. Um, so that would change it from like just a search box to a search and limit or something. I don't know if anyone has any thoughts on that, but it wouldn't it certainly wouldn't be hard to implement. Anyway, this is this is a fantastic improvement over what we currently have. So thank you very yeah, much. Indeed. Yeah, thank you very much, Tim.
Cool. But yeah, let me know um, if there's any more improvements because I do have some time tomorrow and Friday that I can spend on this if there's anything that's missing. Lazy loading. <laughs> that's probably a bit more than time you got. Uh, I've got time to hack, do some hacking on it. Um, mm -hmm. I'll probably put it in a separate branch. Yeah. <laughs> Cool. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Tim. Okay. Do we have anything left from any other something item on the agenda? Uh, just one final item, which is a note from me. Uh, did anyone have anything else they wanted to raise? Okay. Um, my update is a bit of a downer, uh, which is why I saved it for last. Um, this will be my last UX SIG session. Uh, unfortunately. Um, my time at CloudBees has come to an end. I, I'm taking a different opportunity. Um, and so I won't, I won't be involved uh, beyond, since this is every other week beyond this session. Um, it really has been a pleasure to work with you all. Uh, I know a few of you already knew this. Um, and Tim and Uli, of course, you're not uh, at CloudBees, but, but I so appreciate the work that you've done over the past year, honestly and your openness to collaboration. So thank you very much. Um, but yeah, this this will be my last six session. I know that there will be another designer uh, taking this role. Uh, I don't know exactly when, uh, but we'll keep the SIG updated on that transition. Um, and uh, yeah, that's it. Any questions, I guess? I don't know why you would have questions, but <laughs> that's that. We're going to, we're going to miss you, Joe. <laughs> Yeah. Likewise. Thank you. Yeah, for that. Told you that. <laughs> yeah we talked. <laughs> and like I said, you know, you can keep contributing. You don't have to work. <laughs> As Tim or Uli will tell you, you don't have to work for CloudBeast to contribute to Jenkins. That's true. <laughs> um, I, I think but, yeah. this, I think pulling off something like a SIG and, and I know that it hasn't like scaled tremendously and, and it's fluctuated in size a little bit as a group, but pulling this off, I still think is really impressive. It's, you know, it's a testament to everyone on this call and, and other people's devotion to Jenkins as a project. And I admire it a lot. So thank you everyone. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks. And, uh, thank you. And with that, we'll, we'll call the meeting, I think. Mm -hmm. Thanks. All right. Thank you, everybody. Good luck, Chad. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.